What's up, people, to another NDTV workshop. Today, we are talking about editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro is basically industry standard software. They use it for cutting movies. <laughs> we use it for cutting Shamrock Sports intros. So um, Adobe Premiere Pro is very versatile. There is a learning curve, though. So uh, I'm glad that we can go over this today. If anyone joins along the way, then we will see if they have any questions, but for now, I'm alone, so I'm just gonna give y'all a little little virtual lesson. So let's just jump right into it. I will share my screen. And this is what Adobe Premiere Pro looks like. Um, if you install it on a Mac, you know, it'll it'll show up in your launch pad here somewhere, Adobe Premiere Pro. So you can open it up that way. I already have it loaded up because it takes a sec to load but this is the software. This is how we edit videos here at NDTV if you wanna get a little more advanced than just your basic iMovie. So Adobe Premiere Pro opens up. How we start editing a video is we start a new project. This is the Adobe Premiere Pro file, so we'll just give it a name. I'll call this NDTV Workshop and then decide where I want to save it. I made this folder on our desktop called workshop files, which will have everything we need for this workshop. So I'll just save it right there into this folder. And then we know where our project is going to say a lot of this stuff, the defaults are just fine. So we don't need to worry about it. So then we jump right into the software. Let me explain this software a little bit and then we'll actually walk through the process of editing a video. I'm going to use our Shamrock Sports intro just as a pretty basic one because we need to update it anyway. So why not kill two birds with one stone? This is how Adobe Premiere Pro looks like when you just open things up. Everything's blank and this is kind of how things work. So there's four different panels on the screen here and each panel kind of has a different function. This is our timeline right here when we drag videos in. If you've seen iMovie or another editing software, the way that this works is whatever is on top, then we'll see over, over here. This is where the video shows up. The timeline runs and then basically what we're watching will show up here so that we can watch it. The way the timeline works is whatever is on top will actually show in the video. So then you can layer different things. You can put graphics on uh, highlights on videos or whatever the heck you want to do, man. So there's these four different panels. We can change the way that these show up. Um, can I hide these controls? There we go. We can change the way that these show up with these different workspaces up here. I'll just click you through a little bit. These make different panels pop up that we can work with, which makes things easier for different functions of video editing. Like if you're gonna add graphics, this kind of workspace changes where the panels show up so it might be easiest. Um, for pretty much 95% of the project, you'll be working in this editing workspace though, just because um, that's, that's what's best for editing. So we have these different panels. Each one has a different function. The timeline, that's where our things show up. This program panel, that's where we can watch back our video as we're editing it. Then this panel up here, you see all of these different options for things that we can fill this space with. Uh, it's kind of custom and we can use, you know, different things for it when we need to. You'll get a better, better idea of these different effects controls and source panel when we jump into the video editing. These are probably our most used effects controls lets us change things like opacity and size and then this source panel um, shows us basically the video that we're inserting into our timeline before we do it and then finally this panel down here we can do a lot of different things here we can search for media to import we can see all the files that we've imported uh, there's a bunch of different effects we can have access to um, you don't need to understand everything that I'm saying right now. Just understand that this is kind of the basic layout of Premiere Pro. Down here, we have our timeline. Then we can watch back our timeline. And then these two panels over here help us make edits to the videos in our timeline. So let's 
actually um, go to work on this project. When you have Premiere Pro on a Mac, it also goes on PC. You can drag and drop things pretty easily. So I have this folder, workshop files. I can just take this folder and drop it right in here. Um, right now I'm under this project colon NDTV workshop. This is where you import all of your files. If um, I'll just do it right now because it'll take a minute to import. Another way that you can import into this box here uh, is you can go up to file and then there'll be some drop down controls. I'm just clicking through all of these different things. If we go up to file here, then um, we can import media using this button or normally I'll just go over here and I'll right click and hit import. If for some reason the drag and drop isn't working, then you know we can find our stuff another way. But once we have all of our files in here, then we can go to work. I actually imported a bunch of our old files. Uh, the reason we're getting these question marks up top here is because basically what Adobe does in order to locate your files is let's say I have a bunch of files in my downloads folder and I import them into Premiere Pro. What Adobe does is it says, hey, this, this video is housed in our documents folder on the computer. So it's housed like right down here. And then if I end up moving the video later, then you need to redirect that path to where you moved it to in Premiere Pro. So basically I imported a bunch of these old files here from one of our intros last year and they are all, all those files have been moved. So I'm actually just gonna delete them out using the, the delete key. I just click on it and hit backspace or delete. If I really wanted to, I could find them again, but I imported a bunch of new videos for us to use. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, but yes, here are all of our files. Taking files from here and putting them into here is as easy as uh, dragging and dropping them. So you can really start whatever way you want to. You can start with um, different videos. You can start with the audio. For this one, I want this to be uh, a little more eventful. So I'm gonna start with the audio so that we can listen to it. Basically, the vision of this project is at the beginning of every Shamrock Sports, we just have a, an intro that shows some video highlights. It shows um, some scenes from our show, from the latest football game, some of our crew, and we have some cool music in the background to um, keep things interesting. So I imported this music. We're grooving. And this is uh, one minute. So I went and found all of these files beforehand. If you're doing your own custom project, then um, you'll have to find everything yourself. But I found this one minute audio clip just off the, the good old internet. And um, now we'll start adding to it. By the way, if you didn't notice what I did here, uh, how the timeline works is there are video clips on top and audio clips on the bottom. This kind of double barred line is the barrier between the two. So you can drag this if you want, you know, to see a little more video or audio. And then if I wanna make these thumbnails bigger, then I can drag this boundary between the two channels. So like this is audio channel one, this is audio channel two, and I can drag the boundary between these to make this easier to see um, for audio, for instance. I guess one kind of note I should mention if we're talking about audio is when we export our video, um, generally across the board, we want it to export between negative six and negative 12 decibels because that's what works best um, with our system setup. So then we're exporting everything at a consistent audio level. This prevents us from making people's ears bleed when we put videos over the, the big board. If we have something coming through super quiet and then something comes through way up here, then the people in midfield commons are gonna 
jump out of their seats, not appreciate us too much. So first thing I'm gonna do with this audio clip, we see right now it's coming through pretty high. The audio comes through way up here. So we're gonna bring it down a little bit. Maybe that was coming through at, I don't know, zero decibels. So what we can do is click on this little bar in the middle. This is our volume bar. There's other ways to do this too, but this is the simplest. And then we can just click and drag. Maybe it was coming through at zero and we want it between six and eight. So we take off about nine decibels. That's pretty good. Now let's see where it's coming through. There we go. We are groovy. So um, if we or you in your project end up adding audio on top of this, like a voiceover, the one thing you'll want to do is make sure your background music is really quiet. There's ways where you can make sure that happens in specific places, which I can show you later. But if you have a voiceover over your music, then you want to make sure you can hear the voice. So we'll want to uh, cut that at specific places. So let's, let's just start by throwing in some highlights. Shamrock Sports intros are generally a bunch of quick cuts between things. Let's start with a shot of some people on set. Let's pull from There we go. This is our last week's video. Um, if you just hover over these videos in the doc, then you can see kind of what happens in them, which is very useful if you're searching for something specific, like I am. So what I'm going to do is I want to insert a very short clip of this past episode into here. Um, there's many ways you can do this. I'll show you the easiest way, but this is what you probably shouldn't do. If I just click on this and I drag it into here, I just dragged a half hour episode into a video that I want to be one minute long. So that's generally not what we're going for. One way to do this easier, say I know, say I don't know what I'm looking for. What If I double click on this, this pops up in our source panel. Basically this panel up here, allows us to see what we're dragging in the timeline before we put it in there. So this isn't in the timeline yet, so it's not in our final video, uh, but I can, they call this scrubbing when you move this um, time head across the, um, across the video. So I can scrub a little bit, look for something cool, some, elaborate hand motions that would be interesting to show something. There we go. I like that, Chris waving his hands. So if I want something around here, maybe I'll play it back so I can um, time exactly when I want to pull it out. But basically what I'm going to do is these buttons right here mark in and out. So this is my full video. I found a small section kind of area that I want to pull out. So these bars right here mark in and out. So I'm gonna play this back and mark specifically where I want to cut in and out of this. A miracle, like all we would ever hear is, oh, you know, Notre Dame, they, they won it in a year that doesn't count. They, they, this, this doesn't matter at all, join a conference. Like, um, <laughs> all right, so I cut a very tiny bit of that piece uh, because I want a, a very quick little snippet to go in this master video and now, once I have that piece cut out, I can just click on this video because the in and out is marked and drag it into our timeline. And then what happens is we have that little tiny piece in the middle of this very long, or we have this little tiny piece of the very long video now in our timeline. One thing I'm gonna do real quick just to make things easier for myself, I'm gonna take the music, drag it down to the bottom, take the audio and put it on top. This is just the way that I prefer to work, having 
the the music down low because it's kind of less important and you do less edits to it than um, the audio up top. Then one thing to note, these, the reason why this is zooming in like this is because <clears throat> the video that we have here is bigger, like 1080p versus 720p is just bigger um, size than what our sequence is set to, which makes the video show up bigger, you know, because if this is set to 720p and this video is 1080p, there's a bunch of extra pixels on the outside that we simply aren't catching. Um, there's a couple of ways we can fix this. One of the easiest ways is if we go into this effects controls panel up here, um, you'll be using this a lot. Then we can change the size of this video. And how we do that is first we select the video right here go into effects controls, and this gives us so many different options of things that we can change. Like we can change the opacity, we can um, change the rotation if we want to. I'm just gonna command Z, set that back to normal. But then we can also change the scale. And this scale will simply shrink this video and we can bring it back exactly where we want it. Boom, just like that. Now, I can do this with a bunch of our other clips. Let's just cut in. Like here we got a pretty short clip, four seconds of uh, one of our camera people from last year, so we can drag that in. Honestly, I think four seconds is too long, so I'm gonna take like half of this. Boom, we get the thumbs up, the smile turns back to the camera. Perfect, that's enough. We'll take this, drop it in here. This is bothering me. There's a bunch of nuances to Premiere Pro that you kind of learn when you work with it. If you kind of just hover over a bunch of buttons, you'll figure out what things do, um, like this designation tells me where um, video is gonna go when I drag and drop it in here. So let me find some other short clips that we can add in here. Here we got someone at our soundboard. This is a 10 second clip. So it's kind of static. I like motion. So we'll uh, bring this back, catch her moving her hand over to the soundboard. Cut it right after that, drag it in, boom. So right now I'm just pulling a bunch of clips and then we can, I um, don't oh know. Pulling a bunch of clips and then we can bring it back and make it fit together all fancy like. Here we have a six second clip. Let's just take that little bit of it. One thing to note when I'm kind of doing this is the way that these numbers work that I'm referring to when I'm talking about the seconds. Um, basically how this works, just like a clock, we have hours, minutes, seconds, but then this last designation refers to frames. This is 30 frames per second. So if we actually, uh, I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to go frame by frame. So right now I have this video selected and I wanna go frame by frame. Oh, <laughs> over here is where we're looking. So if I use the arrow keys, we'll see this go up to 29 and then back down to zero because there's 30 frames in a second. So this is the time code. We have hours, minutes, seconds, frames. And I can use the arrow keys to actually cut this at a specific frame if I wanted to. Good thing to know. So I'm just gonna run back here. I actually pulled some highlights from the last football game too. So let's take a look at these and cut some. 
Uh, that looks like a sweet touchdown play. Let's catch this. Boom. Dishes it. Dives. Oh, that wasn't actually a touchdown. You caught me. I didn't watch the game. Still pretty dope, though. He thinks it's a touchdown. We'll drag in this highlight. Maybe there's another one. Is this a copyright violation? Probably. Do our Shamrock Sports folks care? Not really. That seemed pretty cool. Boom. Fumble and he gets it. I like this play. Let's take it. And here's an instance where I'd want to go frame by frame because I don't want to get this quick cut. So if I go frame by frame, I can cut the last exact frame that I want, drag it on in here. Maybe we'll get one more. There we go. I'll go frame by frame again. Bingo, mark my in using this key. Scrub to the end. He scores, celebrates. And then we'll cut this before it fades to the next play. All right, here we have plenty of highlights to fill this one minute video we're going for. Um, we have some clips, we'll need to pull some more, but let's start putting some things together. I'd probably want to start just with a basic Shamrock Sports logo, perhaps, and then we uh, fade into some highlights from our shows. So I'm going to drag this logo, drop it in here. Once again, I'll need to change the scale of it to fit our settings. Pow. And then I'm thinking, let's open this up with the fade effect. So um, how we can do that is pretty simple. Multiple ways again, but let's just do this the easy way. So I want to switch this panel to an effects panel so I can easily add some effects. The way we can do that is these two arrows here on the side have a bunch of different panels linked to it. I'm gonna hit effects. And then I know that there's an effect called a dissolve that is essentially a fade. So right here, I have my dissolve. This is what kind of fades one thing into the other, or you can use it at the beginning for an end of a clip to fade to or from black. So all you do, click, drag and drop it on the video or graphic that you want to fade in and then boom this is what happens sweet we got our fade going so since i want this to be quick maybe i'm gonna trim this a little bit trimming is as easy as clicking on the end of a clip and dragging it back when we get this little red um this little red bracket that's when we can either drag in or drag out when we're hovering over it. So I'm gonna bring it back here maybe. Um, moving clips is as easy as clicking, dragging them along the timeline. One cool thing about Premiere Pro that's different about iMovie, I can have black space here. You know, when I'm working, it's just easier that way. Whereas iMovie will automatically glue everything together. So then if I were doing this in iMovie, it would look something like this which can be hard to work with at times. So in Premiere Pro, by the way, I just clicked, made a little marquee selection here in order to select everything at once. But um, I can just click and drag and connect this. Let's see how these few seconds look. All right. Um, a lot of times in these clips, we'll cut the audio just so they look 
smoother, but I actually like this audio and I think it's fun. So what I'm gonna do is lower this music so that we can hear what he's saying better. Um, remember, we want this to come out between negative six and negative 12 decibels. So let me make this easier to see. Now we're going to add something called the keyframes. Um, keyframes are kind of your key to animating things. You can add keyframes on any one of these effects over here. And basically a keyframe is just a start point and an end point. So if I wanna animate something like a fade, for instance, I mark where I want a video to be at the beginning, which might be, you know, 100% opacity, and then if I want it to fade to black, I simply mark where I want it to be at the end, which would be 0% opacity, and then Premiere Pro would automatically fade from 100 to 0 over that time frame. So what I want to do here is put in keyframes for this specific value because I want it to start pretty high and normal and then cut lower when Chris's audio comes in. So the way I'm going to do that is first, I want to zoom in so I can see this better. And this slider along the bottom lets me slide along the timeline. But if I click on the ends of these and drag it, then I can zoom in and out. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, slide over, and then I can put in keyframes. A couple different ways we can do this. I'll show you what I normally do for audio. Um, so I need to mark my start point when I want the video to start fading the audio downwards. I think here would be a pretty good point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the command button on my keyboard and what that does, watch how my cursor changes to this, this white cursor. That means I'm adding a keyframe. So boom, I drop this keyframe in here and it's just this little dot. One thing you'll also notice if I undo this, check out this little distinction right here. If I just undo and redo, this shows us in the effects control panel that we just added a keyframe. So right here, I have my first keyframe. Then what I'm going to want to do is another one a little bit later. So then I can drag the audio down. Boom, I'll drop another keyframe. And what this allows me to do is if I drag, so I have this keyframe selected, it's blue. If I drag this downward, now what I've just done is faded the audio between these two keyframes or changed the level of the audio. And it's kind of a constant fade from this level, level one up here to level two down here. So what that sounds like is. You know, Notre Dame, they, they wanted in the year. Now, I basically can't hear that music, but I want to hear it a little bit. So I'm just going to bring this up and listen again. You know, Notre Dame, they, they want it in a year that doesn't count. They, 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 this, this doesn't matter at all. Still can't hear it too much. And I kind of think that fade is a little bit abrupt. So we're just going to keep messing with this until um, we like the way that it, that it sounds. Maybe I'll bump Chris's audio up a little bit so it's easier to hear him. And here's what we got. You know, Notre Dame, they, they won it in a year that doesn't count. They, 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 this, this doesn't matter at all. Join a conference. Boom. One thing I noticed there at the end is the word conference got cut off. I kind of want to bring it back a little bit. So it's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to select the end of this clip, drag a little bit further till I hear conference. Join a conference. I'll join a conference. I'll join a conference. So, you know, it's a lot of guessing and testing, but that's the way the process works. So here we faded the audio down. What I'm gonna wanna do at the end is fade it back up to this uh, normal height. So I'll just add two keyframes when I wanna start and stop this fade, and then I can move them, slide them back and forth, adjust them to, where I want it. And now here is our audio fade that we just animated in using keyframes. You know, Notre 
Notre Dame, they, they want it in a year that doesn't count. They, 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 this, this doesn't matter at all. Join a conference. Oh, and then it fades back to the normal audio that we're looking for. This might be a tad too much. Um, just looking at the audio levels over here. So I'm going to bring this down. If I hold the command key after I've selected this, I can get super exact with how much I bring it down. And now what do we got? They want it in a year that doesn't count. They, they, this, this doesn't matter at all. Join a conference. That's pretty good. So um, I'll bring this fade a little longer and then let's add in our next clip. Kind of keeps it interesting if we cut between um, clips in the studio and then highlights. So I think I'm going to take one of these highlights and move them in. Let's just take this first one because why not? Let's watch this and decide if we want the audio or not. This doesn't matter at all. Join a conference. All right. It's really a matter of preference if we want this highlight audio or not. Um, let's keep this and then I'll show you how we can delete the audio later because right now if I have this clip selected and I delete it, it deletes both the audio and the video. Um, so let's keep this audio here. I kind of like it and then I'll show you how to delete another one later. But because we kept this audio, then we're going to want to keep this audio level for our music pretty low for a little bit longer. So what I could do is I could take this keyframe and drag it way over and then adjust the other one. I'm just going to select this keyframe and hit the backspace button, which will delete it. So now I'm staying at a low audio level this whole time. I'll delete this other one too. So here's what we got. Uh, they, 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 this, this doesn't matter at all. Join a conference. Williams helmet off. He's out. Jafar Armstrong in. Fake to him. Setting up the screen to Armstrong. Notice how the audio dropped there between Chris and this highlight. So because this audio drops from about negative six to negative 12, I'm gonna boost this a little bit so the audio is a little more even. So maybe I add three decibels or so, and then maybe I bring Chris's audio down a tad. Boom. I'll join a conference. Williams helmet off. He's out. Jafar Armstrong in. Fake to him. Setting up the screen to Armstrong. That's closer. So I dig it. We will bring that up a little bit more. And that's good enough to not annoy anybody. So we had shot in the studio. Uh, a highlight. Now let's bring it back to the studio. Uh, I kind of like this sequence right here because it gives. Um, our support staff a shout out. It looks like these need to be adjusted though as far as scaling goes. So let's do that real quick. I have this one selected. I'm gonna scale this back. And one thing we can actually do, uh, I'll show you guys with the scale effect, but we can do it with any effect. Like if we had a rotation we wanted to keep constant across different things, uh, if we wanted a constant opacity for things. This helps with color correcting too. Uh, once you reach that level, if you make certain color adjustments to one video and you want to apply them to another video, this makes it really easy. All we can do is click on our effect. So scale is the property, the effect is motion. I can click on this and copy this effect, which right now is just the scale that we changed. And then I can paste the effect on here, watch this change. If I paste the effect, I'm just gonna use Command V to paste. Boom. Then the scale is changed to match that the scale of the clip before it, exactly. 60, 67, 67. And then if I roll over this clip, it's at 100. 
if I paste the effect, now it's 67. So we pasted the exact same scale for all three of these. And let's see how it looks if we bring this back next to our highlight. One thing that I could do to slide these all over, I could drag them all and slide them over, or I can do a cool thing called a ripple delete. If I just select this space and I hit the backspace button on the keyboard, boom, it shrinks everything down, which makes things a lot easier. Now let's watch it. I like this. I kind of want these cuts to be quicker though. Like this, I might want to cut it before this, this kind of late zoom starts. So I'll watch it back. And I want to cut it right there. So um, notice how I have this playhead at a specific point where I want to cut the video. Then I can select the very end of it drag it back to the playhead and that gets me exactly at the at the frame I want to cut it on and we can see that with the white arrows that pop up right here and right here when I drag this back to the playhead boom that tells me that I'm cutting it at the exact point that I want to now let's shrink this one a little bit I want to start that clip here and that's a good ending. So I like that. Let's bring this back. That's probably a good length. Now let's watch this again. Decently quick. Um, now, one thing that we'll notice, there's no audio in here because that's the way that we shot these videos just without audio. But if we wanted to delete this audio, Notice once again, if I click on this audio and I hit delete, I delete the whole clip. Let me undo that with Command Z. Um, if I just want to delete the audio, one thing you can do is I can right click on this clip, go up here and hit unlink. And the unlink option unlinks the video from the audio. So now I can click on my audio and delete that without losing the video. So I'll do the same with this clip and the next one. And now we just have the video from those clips and there's no audio. Speaking of no audio, notice the difference here. That cut in the music is pretty weird, so let's bring it up by adding some keyframes real quick. I hit command, I drop some keyframes where I think I'll want them. I'll move them around a little bit to give my fade a little time. And now let's listen back and we'll watch over here to see um, the level it's coming through at. Coming through between six and 12, which is pretty good. Um, so we cut from studio to highlight, back to some studio picks. I'm feeling another highlight. Let's drag this in here and we'll probably need to adjust this audio and it's probably gonna be pretty consistent here because it's from the same video. So I'm gonna add in some keyframes. And if any of these steps are confusing, y'all can always rewind and rewatch these. Um, but let's try to quicken this up a bit for you so that I can show you how to export. All right, Ray lined up in the backfield. Same motion, same setup, this time. Looks like I want to boost this audio a little bit, and I want it to be exactly what this is over here. So what I'm going to do is copy the audio effect that I put on this. And the way I do this is in my effects control panel, I go over to audio. The volume is what I want to copy. We can see my level here. So I'll right click and copy it. Then I'll click on this video that I want to paste it on, Command V to paste it. And I'll do it on this next video too, so I don't need to worry about it. Now let's see what we got. To the right, Ray lined up in the backfield. Audio level same is coming through same good. Same setup. This time it's the boot. Ray's in trouble, and he is brought down by Frosty. Bingo. Now I think we need another clip from the studio. So let's 
go back to our clips over here and how we get there is um, we can select our bin over here. It's called a bin. Sometimes project shows up. If I just go up one level, it's called a project. But this folder they call a bin. So this is where we got some of our some of our stuff. So let's let's give Karen and Grant a little bit of a shout out in this promo video because they shot segments for us last time. So let me pull a piece of Kieran talking and Grant talking and splice them together real quick. So let's take this. So this is at, this button will bring back to my end. That's nine seconds. Let's take maybe about a second of his video in here. Mark my out, drag it on in here. Then I got Grant over here. I like Grant's point. So boom, Grant points and I wanna catch that. So I'm editing frame by frame using my arrow keys. Bingo, I have his out, which is at about five seconds. So maybe I'll make the in around four seconds. Bingo, now we have these videos in here, but we'll notice again, we'll need to adjust the scaling. So I'll click back over here to one of those that we've done before copy the scale, the motion effect again, and then paste it on these, and it should be, yes, very accurate. Now, I'm just gonna assume that we don't want the audio on these, so let me unlink these real quick, delete the audio. Bingo. And now we have real quick cuts of them. Maybe we add another clip from the studio because I see we have some space to fill. Do we have anything fun going on? You know what's fun? I think it was fun when the highlighter fell. I think this is a classic Shamrock Sports moment. We already have an in March. Check this out. Uh, the highlighter falls. What a great Shamrock Sports moment. I think this is a little long though, so let's cut off a little bit from the beginning. Boom, cut off a little bit. Now we drag it in. Let's take the audio off this and drag this highlight in here. And then before I even play this back, I'm just gonna make some audio adjustments that I think will work. How? And now let's watch this whole section back. In motion. By the way, I am hitting the space bar to play and pause. You can also hit the play and pause button, but there's a bunch of shortcut keys in here that make things easier to do. Um, you kind of get used to them over time. Like for instance, the space bar plays and pauses. And then this one tool, this is very helpful. It's called the razor tool. If I wanted to split a clip right in the middle of it, I can click on this tool and this will chop clips up like this. So then I can get to this thing and delete it. I'm gonna undo that real quick. Um, normally you're just on this selection tool so I can select clips and move them around. If I wanted to get to the razor tool, the shortcut key is C on the keyboard. So if I hit C, boom, I cut to this razor tool and it makes it easy to chop up clips. If I undo that, I can switch back to the select tool, which is this one up here with the letter V on the keyboard. Just some, some shortcut keys that may help. This time it's the boot racing triple and he is brought down by Frosty. Yep. 
I like that audio, but again, we need to fix the scaling. I don't remember. Let me see. Do I have that copied? Yes. Boom. Brought it back. All right, around here we have about 12 seconds left. I think this is pretty good. I can um, drop in our logo because normally we cut to that, zoom it in a little bit, and then I can leave some audio underneath to keep running when our when our intro goes. So I think this will be good. Let me correct the spacing on this. And then normally what we like to do is zoom this in a little bit. And I'll show you how to do that with keyframes. Um, so what I want this to do is basically zoom in on the shamrock so it will get closer into it. How we can do that is we go into the effects controls panel and we're just going to set some keyframes that tell this, hey, zoom in a little bit, or maybe we slide over to the S and zoom in on the shamrock specifically. Let me undo those things. And how we can get this to animate is we set our, our keyframe. So we go to the beginning of the clip, set where we want the scale to start, and we can do this um, up using this panel using these keys right here. This tells us toggle animation, just as, hey, we're gonna be changing these things. We want it to change over time. So we queue these up to change. Uh, and then these buttons allow us to add keyframes. When we turn on an animation, we automatically get a keyframe that starts from the point where we did that. So essentially, this is our starting point for position and scale, position being, you know, left and right scale being how much zoomed in we are. So one simple way that we can animate this is, let's say we want this to be about a second. So I'm looking at 4820. I'm gonna drag this to 4920. Now, if I change my scale, a keyframe automatically gets added. Check that out. So I have no keyframe there. And if I just change my scale, boom, keyframe automatically gets added. So I'm going to adjust my scale and I want to zoom in on the shamrock actually. We haven't done that before, but I think it'll be cool. So I zoom in a little bit, then I slide specifically onto the shamrock. We're going to get super close into this thing. Boom. There's our shamrock. Maybe I adjust the vertical a little bit, I think. That looks pretty good. I want to cut out this little piece over here. Bingo. All right, so let's look at this animation. Aside from the audio, I think that's a little quick. So what I'm gonna do is I can actually select these keyframes up here. Notice how if I click on them, I select them individually. If I hold command when I click on them, then I can select as many as I want to. I believe shift, yes, the shift button does the same thing. So once I selected these, I can just drag them along my timeline up here to lengthen this animation a bit. And Let's see what this looks like. Uh, I kind of like that, but I want it to start a little sooner. I want to delay the start. So I can move my starting keyframes. Maybe I'll select these. You can click and drag to select them. Slide these over. Maybe then I'll want to slide these over a little bit too to lengthen it. Here's what we got. Cool, I like this. Now what I'm gonna do, because the way our episode would work is then we would cut to whoever is sitting on set. I'm gonna keep a little motion on here in case the cut's a little late. So after this keyframe, 
then I'm gonna add one way over here that just zooms in perhaps a tiny bit more and slides. Hold up a sec. All right, I'm back. So we just added a slight little change in here. Why does it bounce? I don't like the bounce. All right, slight little animation going on here. Now what, let's see what that looks like. Uh. All right, let me bring these back a little bit. All right. And now let's fix this audio and then I think we're all done. So I'm gonna want the audio to come up once this video, this last highlight is finished. And then I'm gonna want it to come down once this starts zooming in because that's when our folks on set will start talking. So I wanna make this fade pretty long. And let's see how this sounds. I want to bring this up just a tad. Bingo, and there we have our intro. Let's run it back one time through just to uh, see how everything looks. You know, Notre Dame, they, they want it in a year that doesn't count. They, they, this, this doesn't matter at all. Join a conference. Williams helmet off, he's out. Jafar Armstrong in, fake to him. Setting up the screen to Armstrong. Here comes the senior from Missouri. Who's your on the tap? Inside the five. Ray lined up in the backfield. Same motion, same setup. This time it's the boot. Bryson triple, and he is brought down by Frosky. Now they will go. Yep. Bouncing outside, it is Kyron Williams. He will go the distance. Notre Dame touchdown, Kyron Williams. Bingo, I don't like that bounce, but we won't see that because we'll have cut from it already. So uh, we, just, we just made an intro, people. Now, how do we get it out of here? Uh, good question. Let's turn this Adobe project into a video. We do that through exporting. So if I go up here, hit file, scroll down to export, then this is how we turn our edited project into a video. I'm gonna hit export media, and then it gives us this pop-up. And here's where we can change all of our settings to export it just how we want it to be. Um, for the Hyperdeck, if we're exporting to the Hyperdeck, what we're gonna do is hit QuickTime for our format, and then our preset will be Hyperdeck standard. This is a custom preset that we made specifically for the Hyperdeck. I'm going to export this as if we're exporting a YouTube video because that's something that y'all are likely to do. So I, instead of QuickTime, our preset, there's so many different options. So remember this one, 
8.264. This is where we can export to MP4, which is a pretty universal format. So the two you need to know are QuickTime, which is exporting for the HyperDeck, or H.264, which allows us to export to um, like YouTube videos. What we can do if we want it to be specific, like 1080p HD, we can select this. Pretty easy one to do is just match source, high bit rate, pretty standard. And then all we do when we're ready is we hit this export button and it's gonna take some time, turn this into a video for us and we'll have our finished video. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll go back and I'll give you guys specific times to go to if you're looking for specific um, things to do. Uh, one thing I didn't do is change the title for this. So who knows where it's saved to. Um, let me do that again so that you guys know where the title is gonna pop up. So H.264, match source. If I click on output name, this is where it's gonna, <laughs> So I just saved this into Karen's folder in the drive. Um, let's put this somewhere where we can get to it easier. So I go to desktop. I had that workshop files folder. I wanna save it right here. And we're gonna call this um, Shamrock intro. And then this Friday is September 18th. So nine. 18 we'll save it in the workshops files folder and now we know exactly where it is when we export this so yeah uh, i'll go back and i'll pick out specific times for when you're looking for certain techniques like adding keyframes or importing videos into premiere pro or just kind of about the software if you have any questions of course just shoot me an email and we can do that so now we'll just exit out of this pop-up's going to come up it'll be like you want to save so yeah, sure, I'll save this. And this is the fun part. We can go here and watch our exported video. You know, Notre Dame, they, they won it in a year that doesn't count. They, 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 this, this doesn't matter at all. Join a conference. Williams helmet off. He's out. Jafar Armstrong in. Fake to him. Setting up the screen to Armstrong. Here goes the senior from Missouri. Nice. I won't make us watch this again. But yes, if you have any questions, honestly, one of the best resources is YouTube videos. If you want to do something specific in Premiere Pro, there's probably a YouTube video about it. Um, like color correction, if you just want to do some cool transition, um, just look it up. YouTube, there's going to be tutorials on there that won't be this long. So it'll be a lot easier to get through. So thank you for listening and uh that's all i got for you guys today so i hope that this was helpful and um let me know if you have any questions